In this episode, our virtual bus tour ventures to the foothills of Queensland's tallest mountain, the magnificent Mount Bartle Freer. We're here to meet husband and wife team Ray and Rosemary Vicaroli and take a close-up look at how innovative drainage works are helping improve the quality of the water that leaves their farm. Right, uh, we're just checking the seepage pipes. Uh, you can see this one here is running quite good. It's actually slowed down considering we've just had about six inches of rain in the last week. But uh, what's coming out is uh, basically crystal clear because it's filtered through uh, sand. So it's, uh, yeah, the quality of water coming out of that there is beautiful. Ray and Rosemary's farm is in Queensland's wettest region with annual rainfall totals in the range of seven metres being normal. Draining water away from their blocks using subsurface seepage pipes reduces the risk of sediment and nutrient getting into the drains and stops paddocks becoming waterlogged. Well, we put seepage pipes at the, most of the blocks at the bases of the hills is where you get your accumulation of water and your groundwater coming up. We've got, I would say, kilometres of seepage pipes in at the moment and through doing that there we've managed to drain the paddocks hopefully eliminated the lateralisation of our fertilisers. The paddocks don't get saturated. They've just been a plus plus for us since we've been putting them in over the last 15, 20 years. Funding through the Australian Government Reef Program is playing a crucial role in improving the quality of water leaving the farm. Lovely. A few short years ago, this grassy headland was a washed out gully. It's been transformed into a gently sloping drainage swathe with underground drainage and seepage pipes. Ray and Rosemary's photos show the transformation from rapidly eroding creek bank into a gently sloping headland. 24 sections of 400 millimetre pipe were lowered into place and covered with sand. Two rows of PVC seepage pipe were placed over the top to catch runoff from adjacent blocks and a silt trap was built at the end of the drainage line to catch sediment. The system catches water from 22 hectares of farmland and its construction was a team effort. It was a big project and big thanks to my wife Rosemary and I, who was my offsider. She did all the labouring work and I did all the machinery work and uh, we managed to put in 150 metres of 450 mil pipe underneath plus another two lots of 150 millimetres, uh, metres sorry, of uh, seepage pipes covered in sand, covered in gravel and then top dressed with uh, topsoil which we then seeded it and uh, now as you can see it's turned into a, a waterway which holds any silt that runs off from the paddocks as well. Well it was a Quite a deep drain, safety wise, it was a good thing to cover it in. Plus it helped with the sediment and runoff. I mainly worked in the drain. Some parts I had to get up and down by a ladder. Raymond would drop the pipes in and I'd sort of position them and push them together. The result is a drainage system relying on seepage to catch water, minimising any sediment and nutrient leaving blocks and entering the creek system. Right, uh, this is uh, the main pipe that takes the water from the seepage pipe from the blocks above, plus any runoff from the paddocks goes through this pipe here as well. If there's excess, it overflows and runs through the waterway. These two pipes here are seepage pipes that run beside that take any seepage out of the two paddocks right and left, and they also drain out in the creek. It's about 150 metres from this end to the creek. In such a wet region, Ray is aware that the faster the water flows, the greater the risk of soil erosion. So he aims to stop the water gathering pace in hilly country. I suppose you could class this as a minor project, but my whole plan of the whole farm is to try and make each paddock or each row take its own water instead of accumulation. Accumulation of water starts to give you wash and uh, that's when you start your runoff. So what we've done, we've put a minor cutting here, the water runs down here, goes across and down onto that grassed uh, headland there. So by doing this sort of job on every paddock where possible, I'm eliminating a build-up of water, which is when you start to get your uh, bad runoff. Aside from the impact on farm productivity, there's another reason the Vicarolis don't want soil and nutrient draining away. Their farm borders the mighty Russell River, one of the fast flowing streams of Queensland's wet tropics that carries huge volumes of water in the wet season. The river's looking beautiful, pristine, full of fish, 
and the odd crocodile as well. Over the years, Ray and Rosemary have invested time and effort with their local land care group to rehabilitate sections of the riverbank that had been cleared in the early days of farming. The bank has been tapered and thousands of trees have been planted. The result is a stable riverbank that's no longer eroding. We planted possibly around 1,700, 1,800 trees. Uh, I put all the holes in for them. They come and source seeds from the local area, so we put native trees back in. Yeah, then after a, a flood that flattened them, uh, a couple of cyclones, they're starting to look quite good now. They're starting to then drop seeds. The birds are dropping seeds, so they're, they're regenerating themselves now. The Vicarolis are Smart Cane BMP accredited growers in step with industry best practice. In the Home Office, Ray and Rosemary check soil test results to determine how much nutrient to apply, and they ensure all of their chemical use is recorded. Achieving Smart Cane BMP accreditation has helped reaffirm that what they're doing on farm is the right way to go. Basically we were doing it, it may be not in such a exact way or, or, or to the regulation, but everybody does do some sort of reporting anyway. If you don't, you've got no idea of what's happening on your farm anyway. You know, we're working hard to not only do the recordings, but work to the regulation of uh, what fertilisers we can use, what chemicals we use, and we're following those to a T. Every small improvement is helping. A boiler maker by trade, Ray has even built his own direct drill legume planter to minimise tillage in fallow crops while boosting soil nitrogen naturally. Ray's dedication is no surprise to Rosemary, who knows better than anyone how committed he is to farming sustainably. Well, he's a very passionate farmer. Every day he gets on his four-wheeler and goes around the paddock and checks everything, makes sure it's all right, even when we go walking for exercise. I've learnt a lot about weeds and grasses because we're always pulling them out as we go along. It's an approach to farming the Vicarolis are hoping to hand to the next generation. Uh, we've got a son who maybe, and it's very interesting to go farming when the time is right, so I wouldn't want to hand on to him something that's uh, been run down and uh, sort of look after it for the future of, of everybody.